The topic of this video is graphing inequalities, specifically linear inequalities in the Cartesian plane. Here's a problem. Graph the system of linear inequalities. Okay, so we can see that we've got two inequalities joined by a large brace. To graph the system, we simply graph each one on the same graph grid and identify the overlap of the shaded region from each. Let's start with our first inequality. Okay, to graph this, we go through the same three steps as we've seen in previous videos. So first is to solve for y. Let's move this positive 3x on the left to become a negative 3x on the right. So we have 5y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 15. Next, divide both sides by 5. 5 is a positive number. So that means that we do not have to swap the direction of the inequality symbol, and we do not have to change the signs of the terms on the right-hand side. So we have y is less than or equal to negative 3 fifths x plus 15 divided by 5, which is 3. Okay, so that completes step one. Step two is to pretend that this says equals and to draw the line using an appropriate line type. Well, because our inequality symbol says less than or equal to, we're going to use a solid line type. And the method we're going to use to graph this is the slope-intercept method because we are in the slope-intercept form. The y-intercept is 3. The slope is negative 3 fifths, which is our rise over our run. So rising negative 3 is going down 3, and running 5 is going to the right 5. Down 3, right 5. So from the intercept, we go down 3 and right 5. We want to do this until we run out of room. If I extend the scale of my graph a little bit, I might be able to get it all the way out to 10 so that I can do this one more time. All right, so I want to go down 3 and 5 to the right. Once you've gone as far as you can, go back to the y-intercept and do the opposite. So this means we would go up 3 and 5 to the left. 1, 2, 3, and 5 to the left. All right, once you've gone as far as you can in both directions, you're ready to graph your line. In this instance, we've identified that it is going to be a solid line. So get out your straight edge. Lines, line segments, and rays should be drawn with a straight edge. And draw a solid line through all of your points. OK, that was step two. Step three is the shading step. Our inequality at the end of step one started with y is less than or equal to. So this tells me how to shade. The variable is y, so my two choices are up or down. And because it says less than, we're going to shade down. So I'm going to box in my grid. And I'm going to shade down. Okay, that is our first inequality. Now we just have to repeat this for our second inequality. So I'm going to create some space over here. Okay, here we go. Second inequality. 5x minus 3y is less than or equal to 0. Okay, so the way we're going to solve this is very similar to what we did a moment ago. We're going to subtract 5x on both sides. And that's going to give us negative 3y is less than or equal to negative 5x. We're going to divide both sides by the coefficient of y, which is negative 3. And we're going to keep in mind two things. One, when you divide an inequality by a negative, you have to swap the direction of your inequality symbol. And two, when you divide by a negative, it changes the sign of all terms. 
So this negative divided by a negative is going to become a positive 5 thirds x. So we get y is greater than or equal to positive 5 thirds x. And to make this look like the slope intercept form, I can put a plus zero at the end of that. All right, so that was step one. Step two is to draw this line, and we're going to draw a solid line using the slope intercept method. I'm gonna change colors here so we can tell these apart. <clears throat> I'm going to change to orange. Okay, so the y-intercept is zero. I'm gonna plot that first. The slope is 5 thirds. This is telling me how to rise and run to find other points on my line. So I'm gonna go up five, right three from the intercept. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three. Okay, and I'm pretty much out of room. I couldn't do that again, but what I can do is come back to the intercept and do the opposite instead of up five, uh, right three, I'm going to go down five, left three, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three. All right, so now that I have my dots, I can go ahead and connect those using my straight edge. Remember we said that this was going to be a solid line, so I'm going to draw a solid line through these three points that we have plotted. And that brings us to step three, which is the shading step. At the end of step one, our inequality said y is greater than or equal to. The variable is y, so our choices for shading are up or down. It says greater than, so we're going to shade up. So we're gonna shade up above the orange line that we drew. So we box this in and we shade up. Notice that I'm paying absolutely no attention to the green line or the green shading when I'm doing this. I'm just shading up from the orange line out to the outermost edges of my grid. Okay, so I have now created two graphs of two inequalities on the same graph grid. I am now ready to solve this problem. We solve this problem by identifying the overlap of the shaded region. What part of the graph has both orange shading and green shading at the same time? Well, that would be this part of the graph here. So this region is my final answer to this problem. And every ordered pair, every point inside this black shaded region with coordinates x and y satisfies both of these inequality statements. So I can pick any point that I want anywhere in this black shaded region and get the x and y of that point and replace the x's and y's in both inequality statements and I would get a true statement. This is now a solved system of linear inequalities.